Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Today I've got our very first look at the latest resin 3D printer from the folks over at Elgoot. That's right, we're going to be taking a look at the Elgoot Jupiter Resin 3D printer. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey man, aren't you going to give me a hand with this? No, no, no. You, you got this. No? So today we're going to be getting our first prints up and running off of this unit and take a look at it. See? I told you. You got this. Hey everyone, jumping in real quick since this video is a little bit longer than my normal ones. The first half is going to be covering the unboxing and setup of this particular printer and my initial reaction to the machine. The second half is going to be covering the things that I've run off and 3D printed or my struggle to get things to properly 3D print on it. The good news is it's printing. However, there's one significant issue that Elgoo is helping me try to resolve and I want to share what that is and the results that I've gotten off of the machine so far. All right, so here we go. And funny enough, I forgot this had handles on the side of the unit. Not that I could have reached them because of the plastic wrap all around it. First off, before we even get started on any of this, let me give a huge, and I mean a huge thank you to Elgoo for sending this over for me to print with and check out and show off to you guys what I can do with this unit here. This is an extremely, extremely early unit of the machine. It's not entirely going to represent what will be finally delivered when it's actually produced and shipped out, I believe, early next year. There are going to be a number of things on this, including the way that it was shipped, that will more than likely change versus how you'd actually received it if you backed this over on Kickstarter or if you end up buying it later on in the process. So just keep that in mind that some things that I'm showing here might design-wise change the look look of it, some of the components on here might change, or just based on some feedback here that I might be providing and based on stuff that you guys are seeing and calling out, things might evolve and change before it is fully produced and shipped out to everyone that's backed it here early next year. So with that said, it is a really heavy duty unit. <laughs> I was expecting it to be big and I was expecting it to be heavy. It is very heavy and I was, as you could see in that video, I was somewhat struggling to get it up here on the table. I would highly recommend two people helping you. It's the same thing with a lot of these larger resin 3D printers. Let me get a measuring tape and we'll get some basic measurements here on what I have the unit on hand. Also apologies for that massive glare from the front panel here from my lights. It's gonna happen. But on the side of the unit, it measures a little less than 14 and a quarter. From the legs all the way up to the top, it is 30 inches tall, it is 19.75 inches. So a few other quick call outs, you know, I haven't even unboxed this yet. Fully unbox it and set it up. We got the big touch screen on the front, Jupiter 6K, Elgoo right here, the acrylic panel. It's gonna swing open. It's a single door, not a double door system. Thank you. Uh, also not a huge acrylic panel that you're lifting on and off. The power switch is on this side where I'm standing right here is on the side as well as the power supplies where I'm gonna plug that in. On the back, there's no ports or panels on the back. The USB port for the unit is on the side currently here, which is right over here. That'll make Norm from Tested very happy if that stays the same instead of being on the front. I honestly prefer it being in the front. That's just me personally. I don't like reaching around to the sides or anything like that. But thankfully, it's just not all the way in the back either. So side or front, you know, really works for me. And by the way, if it's not already apparently clear, this is not a review of this. It's way too early to be, you know, anyone to be doing a review of this unit here. So let's open this up and see what's inside. So this is just a temporary box, I believe. Yeah, this is not uh, everything that was going to be pre-packaged. Again, uh, this is way, way early unit here, but it should have a lot of the same stuff here. So we've got the snippers, power supply, filters, gloves, our metal spatula, our plastic spatula, our USB stick that I'll probably be swapping out. Here are some tools. They sent along some extra FEP sheets for me to use because I'm going to be testing this here for quite a while here over the next upcoming months, just running prints nonstop. Here is the air filtration unit piece here. It's a little scuffed up again. It's it's one of their early uh, prototype units here. I've got some masks. And then the thing that I'm most excited for, this is the resin auto feeder mechanism that I'm gonna be able to hook up in here, put a, a bottle of resin in here and it'll auto feed into the vat, fingers crossed. Build plate is in here. Had some protective film on it, so I'm removing that 
here. This looks really cool. There we go. I'll be able to loosen and tighten this. They've got a bolt here on the end. It just doesn't look, you know, as, as polished as a lot of the other Elgoo products are. Uh, but the rest of the design of this looks fantastic. Okay, I am going to have to power on the unit to lift this build plate handle up so that I can get the vat out of here. Whoa, I forgot that it has lights inside of the unit as well. <laughs> the UI is different as well than what we've seen on the Mars 3. I should be able to unscrew this here, the bolts on the side. Holy moly. <laughs> so this vat is absolutely, it's so heavy duty. It's, it's honestly really impressive. Nice handle here so that you can nicely grip it. There's a, a pour spout area here in the front of it. Also, what's really nice is that I'm already seeing is that it's lifted away from the FEP sheet. So like the Saturn or the Mars 3, you're gonna be able to set this flat on a table and the FEP sheet is not gonna be directly on your table surface. In fact, it's a about, it looks like about a half an inch maybe you're, yeah, it's about half an inch or so, maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch away from the FEP sheet, which is really nice. And then here on the end is where we can see the resin filtration or, or the reservoir there that's gonna help pour in using this attachment here that goes onto a bottle. It's gonna pour in, attach, and just start flowing in as resin is used. So looking at the touchscreen interface here, very similar to what you've seen on most other resin 3D printers. I was just trying to figure out how to turn off the light there and it's under the system setting and they have a setting for flood light on or flood light off so that you can flip that on and off. One other thing to note is that obviously this is so early in advance, there's no manual or anything like that for the unit just yet. They have passed along some slicer settings that I'm gonna be using for this once I get resin loaded in here and up in printing. This did have a cover on it that I'm going to peel off here. Another interesting thing about this that I haven't seen on any other resin 3D printer is most of the, you know, any of the resin 3D printers, the screen sits flush with the body. This is a raised screen. And again, I don't know if this is going to remain the same or change, but how this will work is the, the vat here is going to sit on top of that actual screen and sit it over the screen so that it'll go in place. Let's run a quick exposure test on the screen just to make sure that that runs here. So here is an exposure test. One quick note about the LEDs inside the unit. I, it's a yellow LED or it's a warm LED. I wish it was more of a cool white LED light. Again, just my personal preference. I'm not a big fan of the yellow-ish LED light source. But again, uh, yeah, it's just some feedback that I have for the folks over at Elgu. Uh, who knows, maybe those things are swappable or at some point there's a way to adjust those. I'm not entirely sure. All right, I'm disabling the light source on this. Let's try and get the build plate on the actual unit here. So this is a really interesting design. There are lots of bolts. Uh, there's one, two, three, four bolts that you can, that look like they're spring loaded that you can adjust. And I'm not gonna touch them because I believe at least my unit might have been pre-leveled before it was sent to me since they had, I believe, had used it a few times with printing things. There's also two long bolts in the back as well. So the build plate here can be adjusted. There's this big long bolt here that you can shorten or lengthen. I'm going to raise it all the way up and then there's a washer at the top and then two grooves in the back that look like it attaches there. So I'm going to slide this in place and then there's actually little divots inside the top of the build plate that it looks like these bolts rest on. The little notches in the top of the build plate align with these bolts and I'm assuming that's how it's all aligned and leveled. A really interesting design that I haven't seen before and seems extremely stable. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Elgu, one thing I would like to see is that the hinge mechanisms here on the door, if it could open up beyond 90 degrees. Like if this could go a complete 180, that would be really nice. So it could fully open up, not just open up to here and then stop. I am noticing on the back of the vat as well is another clear protective film. So removing that. So the vat doesn't 
really perfectly align like it does on the other Elgu machines. And I went back through my notes here and the Elgu folks mentioned that they're, they are still working on the alignment for the VAT to the printer itself. It's just not as currently, it's just normally, it sort of just locks into place before you bolt it down. Uh, right now, it just it's, feels like it's kind of freely floating, and I'm guessing I'm just going to need to align the bolts with the holes here and then tighten it down in place. I just turned on the light as well, just realized I uh, have a light inside the printer, which is great. The Another weird thing to me is that the screen, it feels like there's a lot of pressure being placed on the FEP sheet, so we'll see how this goes. Fingers crossed, everything everything works everything works well. There's just a, a little bit of a gap around the edge of the vat to the actual screen. Again, that screen is raised. It's not flat and uh, perfectly level with the printer. All right, let's load up some resin here. I'm going to be using El Goose standard uh, gray resin. Obviously, I could fill that up a whole lot more, but I'm just going to run a really quick print here. All right, that was a 17 minute print. That was my very first print. I fired off a validation matrix print here using the Elgu standard resin with the default profile that they passed over to me to try out. Uh, obviously this is not a mono screen printer, so it's not gonna print as fast as one of those, but not too bad here. So here with the build plate, it is slightly angled, so some of that resin is pulling off. I did use the plastic spatula to help feed some of it off there. You're going to have resin that's pulling here on the top of the flat surface there. would be great if something could be done about that, but I'm not entirely sure what. Also, can I just say that it's nice to see a larger resin 3D printer with a deep vat. This is a much deeper vat than what we've typically seen on some of the other larger resin 3 printers out there. So I probably should have cleaned off the underside of the build plate before taking this off. Here is the validation matrix. It's actually already coming off, which is either a good or a bad sign. Obviously, if there was some sort of build plate holder, that would be fantastic to help expedite the resin pooling process here that's going to come out. This is just a bunch of wasted resin now that could have gone back into the vat. Maybe if I can figure something out, I'll design it and uh, test it out here over the next few weeks. So while I have the Jupiter build plate out of the unit, why don't we take a look at a comparison between the other Mars printers. So here's the standard Mars build plate, same as the Mars, the Mars 2. Yeah, it is a good bit larger. It's about three and a half times larger, you know, give or take there. It's it's pretty significantly bigger. So here's the Mars 3 build plate, which is a good bit larger than the standard Mars build plate. And again, still obviously drastically larger. And it's still, this is probably a solid three times larger than the Mars 3. And then here is the Elgu Saturn build plate, currently the largest Elgu resin 3 printer that you can buy. Here we can get a quick comparison of just how much larger the Jupiter build plate is compared to the Saturn. The Saturn and the Mars 3, yeah. You could fit the Saturn and the Mars 3 on one of these build plates. So let me cut off the print testing here and actually start talking about the print results that I'm seeing from the unit here. And that major issue that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I'm having with this machine that El Goose trying to help me address. And I have printed a lot of things over the last two to three days with this unit with trying to test out this machine and try and really solve the one major issue that I'm having. But I've been able to get a number of successful prints off of this. The great news is with that crazy build plate and that's a completely different build plate design than I've seen on any other machine. Uh, it is a little bit complicated to level, but once you've leveled it, it's it's really good. Uh, I've honestly probably leveled that in attempts to try and troubleshoot some of the issues here with the machine multiple times. And the only reason why I re-leveled it multiple times was just again, trying to troubleshoot the issue that I was having with the machine. The other amazing thing is that VAT and the auto refill function. It works so stupidly well. Uh, well, I did actually have, uh, the first time I used it, it worked perfect. It kept the tank fully filled. This 
this last time that I tried using it, I didn't fill up my tank all the way. I, pur uh, I purposely left it really low because I knew I didn't need a lot of resin in there, but I did f put in the actual auto refill and I noticed it only put in a little bit of resin. It just didn't continually keep feeding it in. So maybe I didn't insert it right. I have to do some more testing with it, but the first time I used it, it worked so perfectly well where I printed a whole bunch of these miniatures and when I went to check on it, it was still, the vat was still full because it was auto feeding from the huge uh, extra thing of resin in the back. Also having the light inside of this huge printer, I found to be extremely helpful when <laughs> Uh, just in general, working with the unit. It's a really nice thing to have on there and I'm not using my phone light or trying to pull in one of my studio lights in here closer just so I can get a better visual inside the printer. Uh, one thing that I'm hoping will be changed before this officially rolls out are the feet for the printer that just kind of seem a little awkward in its current state. And again, I know this is a prototype, so some of these things might change. And a lot of this feedback I've already provided over to Elgu separately. This just doesn't look as professional with the bolts there, but uh, it's nice that they are completely adjusted adjustable and I hope with whatever design they go with that they stay adjustable so that you can really make sure that the printer is level on the print surface that you're working with. The air filter unit is also something that works extremely well and just directly plugs right into the back of the printer with the USB entry there. So you're not having to remotely charge this and remember to charge it and then stick it in the unit like the existing filters do today. I do think that this is a great addition and having it directly plug in there inside the printer is a brilliant idea and something unique to this machine that I haven't seen with other printers. One other thing I wanted to call out that I was kind of in shock about is that how quiet the machine is when it's printing. There are fans on this and I've had lots of other large resin 3D printers and they're all typically really loud. This is pretty quiet in comparison to those other machines. One other nice thing is that the touch screen is a much larger touch screen than you have on the standard Mars or Saturn printer. So you're a lot less likely to fat finger the wrong button when you're pressing around on those screens. One other odd one that I mentioned in the beginning that I haven't seen on any other machine is the raised screen design. It's uh, it's a little odd to me, just again, it's, it's, it's different. Uh, it seems to work just fine though, as far as I can tell with the printer and the vat because the vat is raised as well. Uh, with the FEP sitting on top of that screen, it, I was a little nervous that it was gonna puncture the FEP. I've had zero issues and I've been again, been running prints pretty much 24 seven for the last three days. So let me explain that print issue that I'm having and how Elgu's already working on fixing this. I've had lots of successful prints off this and it seems to be printing really well, prints adhering really well. The problem is I'm having the oddest issue that I've never seen on any other printer before where I'm having vertical lines appear in some of my prints. These aren't horizontal lines, they're not layer lines like you typically would see with some resin 3D prints where it might mean the Z axis needs to be further lubed up or uh, maybe it's not bolted in correctly or your build plate is loose or there's something wrong with the FEP sheet. It's vertical lines that I'm seeing through the prints on the machine. And what's even more odd is that it's only occurring on prints in the very back of the printer. So this is what Elgu and I have been working on over the past handful of days, trying to troubleshoot what exactly is causing this issue. And we've really narrowed it down to the actual screen and more than likely the screen was just damaged during shipping. And Elgu's already sending me out a brand new screen to replace out so that I can further do testing with this unit. In addition, they're also taking extra steps to make sure that the screens on the full production units obviously aren't gonna be damaged like this one was during the actual shipping process. Plus, keep in mind, this was just an early prototype unit. Mine was pre-assembled. If you back this on Kickstarter and pick it up, it will ship in multiple different boxes that you're gonna end up assembling yourself, really knocking down the chances of any damage occurring, unlike mine that was shipped in a huge crate all in one piece. The good news is that the prints that I have on the front of the build plate all look fantastic and are all printing properly and look really well. It's all of those other prints that have all those crazy lines, that's driving me absolutely crazy. I still have high hopes for this machine, especially because of the prints that I'm seeing 
and really do think it's just an issue with that screen. Well, fingers crossed, it's just an issue with that screen. And obviously here, I'm gonna be doing follow-ups with you all once I receive the screen. I'll be hopefully doing a video on replacing the screen because I'm sure some point in time, once someone gets these units, you'll also need to replace the screen at one point or another. And then we'll be doing a really large print on this machine because that is something that I'm dying to do, especially with that auto resin feeder, which just works so friggin' well. I'm so excited about that. It's just, it's opening up the door for much larger prints without having to worry about refilling it or forgetting to refill or getting layer lines from refilling your prints mid print. I did wanna say a big thank you to Elgu for again, sponsoring today's video, sending this printer along. Really excited to get the new screen in place and get some really big prints going on this. I'm gonna be doing a follow-up Q and A video based on questions that I've reached out and asked uh, if you all had them and hopefully we'll be answering as many of those as I can in rapid fire succession here in the next few days. I'll be posting that here about the machine because I'm sure there's some things that I just did not cover. If you have further questions, let me know down in the comments below. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now. Also a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in more information about how you can support me and the channel, you'll find links down below to my Patreon. Love you guys and girls.